Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of the Parasite Podcast. And I am joined by Chris today, who was really awesome. Uh, in the last video I made of this, the last podcast, I had someone on who saw one of my videos and asked if they can use footage. And then I came across Chris's video here. So kind of the same thing happened. I saw footage on his podcast, the Bada Boom podcast, and I'll put links to everything down below, but I'll let him introduce that. And I saw footage and I was like, can I use some of this for one of my Venom videos? And he was gracious enough to let us do that. So thank you, Chris, for being here. Thanks for letting me use the footage. Introduce yourself. Tell people a little bit about you and where they can find you, sir. Hey guys, uh, I'm Chris from, from Bada Boom, one of the co-hosts of the Bada Boom podcast. Um, it's awesome to, to be on the podcast with, with Seek. Uh, it's, I really appreciated that that comment, you know, sometimes people, not that I would have really cared if someone ripped it and stuff like that, but I think definitely like when I saw sort of the video kind of like traveling that way and people reacting to it, it definitely is one of our better performing videos. So like, I've always wanted to pay that forward back to you and, and support, you know, your channel and stuff. So Thanks, man great and you know we've been doing the podcast for two years now and it's, it's been good to kind of get to a point where it's reaching a new audience we've been able to create a little bit of a community meet other creators see what they're doing uh so it's been good i, I think these things are um sometimes people could look at the drama of content creation and stuff like that and i think there is the good side of it is the community building and you know this is uh, an example of that so thank you for having me on Dude, you're welcome. And yeah, that's awesome. And like I said, everyone, I'll put links to his channel, the podcast, everything down below. Please go subscribe, uh, be a fan, become, join their community uh, because their community is a lot like ours. And uh, and I like that too. I mean, yeah, there is that positive side where we talked in the last episode where about gatekeeping and how there are gatekeeping kind of type of fans. And then there are fans who aren't gatekeeping. They're the opposite. They're like recruiters. They're like, please yeah. like re read the stuff I read and, and, and talk to me about it, please. Um, and I got that vibe from you. So, uh, so yeah, you're welcome, man. I mean, when I saw that video of yours and you had like such clean footage of Tom, cause obviously I do the venom vlog. So we, you know, follow yeah. a lot of Tom Hardy's activities and I had no idea this was in the works, this comic book. So when I saw that announcement, uh, with Frank Gary and Scott Snyder and Ryan Smallman, uh, all who I'm a fan of too, I was blown away. So you got this footage when you went to New York Comic Con, which I love that convention at Javits Center. It's amazing. So tell us a little bit about uh, going to New York Comic Con. How many years have you been going and you know, how long you've been a fan and, and what was your general experience that year or this past year at, at New York Comic Con? Yeah, I mean, this year uh, uh, would be probably decade plus at this point uh, of going to New York Comic Con. My first one was in 2011. Uh, I may have skipped the year or two, and then you add the year or two with COVID. Um, <laughs> but basically, basically going consecutively. Um, I used to go for school when I went to school for for journalism, you know, for for press and stuff. But this was definitely the first year that I went in, kind of as a creator, sort of like, you know, I got to meet some of the people that have come on the podcast. You know, anytime I saw something, I was like, let me grab my phone. I had my, you know, my gimbal and stuff like that. And uh, it was really cool, the Artbound thing, because that was a surprise to me, too. Uh, they they had a huge booth. They didn't really have, like, any um, any press about it before or anything like that. I think I may have saw something on Twitter. Then I went to the booth, and it was pretty quiet. And then, uh, you know, all the ash cans uh, that we were able uh, to get, uh, which was really cool. And then one of the, I think it was, like, the Friday or the, the Thursday, um, Towards the end, there was a signing with signing with Frank uh, uh, Smallman, uh, Erie, and Scott Snyder. Yeah, I got that sign, and then the the people that were working the booth were like, "Oh, like by the way, tomorrow Tom Hardy." I'm like, "Oh, what, 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 what I have to do?" <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of money. That's what I had to do. So, uh, <laughs> right, you, you had to buy a um, a metal set. Um, oh wow! Okay, you got you got a, you got them there. I think right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. One of the, the metal oh. that's, that's actually signed and stuff like that. I did sell my Tom Hardy one because I was okay. like not expecting this spend that much money. And I just wanted to meet Tom. Yeah, of course. I was like, hey, like I got the book signed and stuff like that, and I have plenty. So let me just cover the cost of this because I was definitely not uh, expecting to spend that 260 when I did. Uh, but it, it was it was cool, you know. I think uh anytime you you see some excitement around comics like that. I think this year was um, a big year in terms of like celebrities having their own comic. So mm -hmm. at New York Comic Con, they also had um, Kid Cudi announced a comic, which is actually coming out in a couple weeks. Yes, I can't um, wait. 
So he had he had a big uh, panel and stuff like that. I didn't get to go to that. I did go to like this um, installation he had, which was really awesome. And you know, as 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 someone that sort of was in high school when you know his you know best albums were coming out, it was really sure. Cool. But yeah, I, I mean, I love New York Comic Con. At this point, it's like a tradition. Like even years I don't really want to, to go, I'm like I gotta go, you know. And now it's, it's cool because I, I get to share that with with my family and if you're a new yorker you always run into people you probably haven't seen in years and there's always you know really good surprises and you know uh the past few years pre-covid it kind of was taken over by like the movies and stuff like that and this year it felt like there's a lot more focus on comics which was cool that's awesome yeah i mean of course that that always happens at conventions where the, the movie sides because they're so popular as well they want to capitalize on that try to get some um you know more casual fans to come in and hopefully try a comic book too. You know, they like that cross pollination. Um, but New York comic con, I've, I think I've been going since like 20, 2008. So pre aneurysm for me, but uh, you, but I, I have no doubt in my mind, you and I met each other before uh, because <laughs> we used to run a booth at New York comic con for top cow um, and awesome comics when I worked at those companies. And, uh, and so, and I know how much space costs there, like personally. Oh, no, no. I, right. I, <laughs> Especially like if you had like those like, uh, and I've, I've probably seen a Top Cow booth years ago and like mm -hmm. some of the booth space and stuff like that. I mean, they they write it off as like a marketing cost, like especially like in sure. the case of the art bound. But yeah. if you watch the video and you also watch uh, your video where you use some of the footage, that booth was insane <laughs> for a comic book thing. It's they, huge. They went pretty big with it, and I can only imagine what it costs. Yeah, because it's not like, and I was telling people in my video, I'm like, like uh, Top Cow would do like a, a two tables, like make an L shape, you know, or put two tables on each side, and you could have like a walkway in the middle. Like we did stuff like that. We were just usually hanging out around John Carpenter's booth and stuff like that. So we had our regulars that we were always around, and those boots would, yeah, they would cost a pretty penny. And I'm not talking, I'm talking like a couple thousand up to 10,000, uh, yeah. you know, for something small uh, for that many days. So, uh, so you have to like sell and sell and sell to try to break yeah. even. Um, and so when I saw that Arcbound booth, I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> like I, I was like, that's like a Marvel booth at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah. Big. Um, so that was cool though, but I loved your footage. It was, it was really clean. You said you shot that on your, what was it you had your Kindle? Uh, I had an iPhone uh, 14. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. It looks great. That. And, yeah. um, like a, a DJI Osmo, which is a, um, oh, like, okay. a, like a, a smart gimbal. So yeah. it, it well, and, um, because it's kind of a gimbal, like I was able to stretch it out, like almost like a selfie stick. So in oh. those, in those parts where you see sort of the crowd and stuff like that, after I got off the line for signing, I was able to get like some, some better footage of like him signing other stuff and, and all that. It was, it was pretty insane. I think some people were a little upset because, um, initially they're like, Oh, Tom will sign all your books. And then it became uh. Tom will sign one of them. And then everyone else, like the rest of the yeah. creative sign all of them. Sure. Um, just be, I think what happened is they didn't anticipate the demand. I think a lot of people sure. were not um, yeah. expecting Tom to be there. Right. And he's not one to do comic cons like that. You know what I mean? Like he may do like press or something like that for a movie, but you know, sure. to do a signing um, and it was accessible to everyone. Hey, you could do this as long as you pay the two sixty, and they have those metal book sets. So I think they definitely, um, there was definitely a lot of excitement and I think they were, it worked because like I said, it, it almost was like a, a security hazard, like literally like when he when he came in to like sit down for the signing and stuff, it was yeah. like seeing him in a uh, warrior like he was just like, yeah, <laughs> he was just coming through the crowd with security <laughs> and stuff like that. So it, it was cool. That's cool, man. Well, I'm glad you had such a good time. And yeah, seeing that B roll that you got where you're just like you're up high seeing the crowd. I mean, yeah. you you're 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 a great camera operator. Um, right. And uh, and and that also that quality there is a. Uh, I think leans into you as a fan, you as a creator, not just for filming, but when you record your podcast, like you have a good energy about you and you seem like a really nice guy. And, uh, and, and that's cool that you can now share your passion with your family and you're very welcome. I'm going to compliment you a lot in this one. So if you don't uh, like compliments, I'm so, you know, prepare to get uncomfortable. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I know that's interesting about the signing. I love Tom. Frank Thierry is funny. Um, I used to have an, an old Twitter account and then I deleted it years ago. And then um, as soon as I got back on one of my first followers was Frank Thierry. And I'm like, does this guy know me? Like, have I met him? So I reached out to him because uh, of Artbound, And I was like, Hey man, do we know each other? That's so nice of you to follow me. He goes, no, 
<laughs> and I, was like, I was like, oh, okay. Because I feel like within days of me being on Twitter, you're my, you're like one of my first followers and uh, back on Twitter. And uh, yeah. and you used to follow me before I go. So I just assumed you, you knew about my show or something. He's like, no. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I just, I like that you're a fan. I was like, oh, yeah. thanks. Awesome. So um, yeah. But I love small small men's art. I love Scott Snyder. So this is going to be a cool thing. It's a uh, for those who don't know. It's uh, and I'll put a link to your video down below and mine too, in case people want to learn more about Arcbound. It's like a sci-fi opera type like big action adventure story that's you know set in the future and we don't know much about it right now but i'll also put a link to their website down below it's an interactive website where you can scroll around and learn more about the characters so yeah if you want more information just click down there um so switching to tom hardy because like you said he comes in he's like warrior <laughs> he's got his entourage of people nicest guy in the world by the way if if you ever follow him on instagram when people see him out in the wild he is so nice about you just coming up and taking a photo with him. Mm. He is just the nicest guy in the world. And, um, and so as a fan of his, I'm curious, like, are, are you a fan of the guy? I mean, it sounds like you are. Uh, do you have any favorite roles? I know you mentioned warrior, but uh, I just like hearing people talk about him. I know there's a lot of people on my channel that just like yeah. getting other people's opinions about Tom. No, I, I, I love, I love Tom, you know, uh, <laughs> especially uh, again, you know, he's, I think he's one of the, the, the greatest actors of our generation, you know, this yeah. kind of generation going on. So, you know, whether it's something like Inception or, or Batman or um, something smaller, you know, I think uh, The Drop is a really underrated movie. Great with, uh, movie. Again, yeah, James mm -hmm. Gandolfini's last movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he, he also likes to have fun. You know, the reason I like the Venom movies, I know a lot of a lot of people are like, you know, like it just like I like that he goes for it. You know, sure. the fact that he plays both roles and, you know, has a lot of fun and, and plays Eddie as, as a loser. And it's like, well, if you think about it, you know, Eddie is kind of a loser <laughs> yeah. in, in some ways. So I, I, I really appreciate sort of the way he just goes for it in, in certain performances and you know uh warrior is definitely one like my favorite movies of his I, I think you know when i first saw that year like 10 years ago i think I, I cried like that first time watching that last fight and stuff like that so um you know has incredible range i, I could watch him in, in anything and seems to like have fun and you know outside of his work seems to do what he likes to do which is like you know jujitsu and you know be with his dogs <laughs> which is super respectable where it's like someone doesn't um and also like in in the interaction you could kind of tell like you know he's like hey like you know just doing his thing and stuff like that is something he has to do but you know it is good to hear that you know he stops people and, and stuff but yeah for me definitely warrior is 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 the top one and I feel like there's so much I'm, I might be forgetting, but everything I see him in, you know, now that I think about it, Mad Max, Fury yeah, Road, Mad Max. There's so many, <laughs> there's so many movies I've seen him in, and they're kind of like, um, you know, in the lexicon. And then you're like, again, it's just one of those actors when you see it's like, all right, like whatever he's doing, you know, it's it's going to be interesting, and uh, he's going to put his all into it. So if if he's down for it, I'm always going to watch it. For sure. Like you said, there's a commitment level he gives that like, I feel like anyone else who would have got the role of Eddie Brock, they'd bring something to the table, but I don't know if anyone would go 110%. Like, uh, like Eddie is just one of those characters where, like you said, he kind of dissected him and was like, you know, this guy's kind of a loser. He, he makes bad decisions and he gets himself into bad situations because he makes bad decisions. And even if those decisions, his end goal is to do something good, he goes about the doing it the wrong way. And I like that interpretation because I'm like, yeah, that's how Eddie is in the comics. He's a guy who cuts corners sometimes to achieve a goal. And uh, and then he and sometimes cuts the wrong corner and that makes him look like a bad guy. So I, I like that. And I like Tom's approach. And yeah, his movies and even the shows like Peaky Blinders and some of the other stuff he does, uh, um, like Taboo uh, is like a show he produces. So uh, I think this comic to me feels like something where the producer side of him is coming out more where he's like, you know, he produces the Venom movies that way he can get a little bit more creative say with certain things that the character does. Um, and in this case, like uh, it, this is now a property he's attached to. So he can base a character loosely off him. And then if they ever gets made into a movie, he gets some kind of check for it being made into a movie, you know, and yeah. then he gets, and then he can get paid on the back end. And it sounds like a good business opportunity, but, um, but also sounds like a great opportunity to tell a wicked story, um, in a way that a movie might not have the budget for, you know, cause you never know if Arkbound gets made into a film or a TV show, they may not have hundreds of millions of dollars to throw at it. So they can go buck wild in the comic and just yeah. do whatever they want. And then let the movie people worry about the translation later. Um, 
So, so you said Venom, and I'm glad you like, yeah, you know, like that aspect of it. Cause yeah, the movies aren't high art. We've been following yeah. the movies on this channel for years. And I just, I always try to set expectations. I'm like, this isn't going to blow you away. If you come up with some amazing fan story, they're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it, that's not what this is. This is just kind of cheeky fun. And Tom just throwing himself into another role. So do you have any, um, I guess like uh, theories of what the third and final movie could be like, or, or things you would like to see as a fan of the character and as Tom? Yeah, I mean, I it's hard to kind of predict because you know they killed Carnage, right? So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's hard, and I I I don't anticipate them going with Null. You know, I, yeah. I would like that. That's like kind of like the the full goal, like because Tom has played the character for for enough time. I think introducing Eddie's son and sort of going down that path of mm -hmm. Null and some of those like you know Donny Kate stories would be really cool. Um, but it, it's hard to kind of predict what, what they're going to do, uh, with the third one. I know they're shooting in Mexico, which would be really cool, you know, to see like where Eddie's at, especially after, um, the end credit scene and no way home and stuff <laughs> right. like that. Um, yeah, I, I just enjoy the movies for what they are. You know, I think that's like, like you said, they're not high art. They remind me of the superhero movies when I was a kid. You know, sure. when I was a kid, I loved Daredevil. Yeah, like Daredevil. I was gonna say, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so it's like, hey, like, it it almost gets the superficial stuff right. And I think Venom, in terms of like a character, it's, um, I think Todd McFarlane made a really good point. Like, I think they asked him about him, and it's like, hey, as long as you get the visuals right, as long as it, as as long yeah. as Venom is a big hulking thing, Monster. like it should be, like yeah. the comics, I think that's why people. People would probably have been more kind to Spider-Man 3 if, you know, if Venom was huge and had that hulking matter about him. So I just have a lot of fun. And I, I always like the, the way Venom, like, looks in those movies. So for me, I never really have, like, big expectations for it like I do. And to be quite honest, lately I've been trying to sort of get out of the comic book mold and kind of, like, you know, when it comes to the movies, just to kind of have a palate cleanser just uh -huh. because I don't get as excited as I used to. And I feel like it's because it's so much. And the good thing about this year is I'm probably only going to see Deadpool three, Venom three, and maybe Joker. So, yeah. you know, those are the three, whereas like the past couple of years, like, um, like as much as I love Daredevil, I, I, I skipped echo. I, I skipped what if, hmm. uh, I think the last Marvel thing I saw was Loki, which I love. Um, but yeah, so, I'm, I'm trying to take a, a little bit more of like a break to, to get more excited about things, these things. I was like, this is what I wanted. I wanted all these things to come out. Why am I not as excited as I used to be? Um, but I do like that. Um, weirdly, he always like has this different energy where you can't predict where it's going to go. But even with, um, you know, let there be carnage, you know, Andy Serkis was the director. So I was like, what's going <laughs> to, I was like, Oh, like what, what's happening? Like, you know, you got Andy Serkis directing this and, and this one, I think, this one he co-wrote, wrote, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he he did a little bit of that in the second one, like co-plotted it. Yeah. But in this one, I think him and Kelly co-wrote it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's interesting, and also the set photos he he's shown, you know, seeing Eddie and his Golden State Warriors merch, and, and stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Um, so I, I'm just ready to to have a good time. I know he's referred to it as, as the last ride, mm -hmm. but in terms of like what I would want to see, like I said, I would probably want to see like maybe one more movie where you know his you know they get to explore like Noel and maybe the kid because I think at at this point uh we're probably never going to see him and and tom holland spider-man so the next next best thing for me would be to see null i get that yeah i think <laughs> you know the and again i tell people i'm like if you if you have some theories that the third movie is gonna and you know give you everything you want like you know best to reset your expectations now because it's yeah it's probably not going to go that far but um but yeah null is a popular one i know a lot of people are like well what a great way to end the trilogy because in the first movie, it was Riot and Venom and the team were sent here to see if it was a planet worth invading, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and Riot wanted to go back and let someone know that it was ready to be invaded. So, uh, so you could kind of tie this into the first movie and say, all right, here's that invasion that we never got. Um, but it's weird to do a symbiote story where symbiotes are invading the Earth and there's not other superpowered people to be. Co covered in symbiotes yeah. uh you know but at the same time you, we could get a dan symbiote you know and we could get a, an, another Anne weighing she venom type thing um and they're bringing in new characters in this one so you'll see like some new characters that'll they'll pop in so it, it could be fun and, and i think uh i think that's what they're going for is they just if this is the last one 
they want to go out with some fun and do things their way because obviously in the first movie they they had a you know um I guess kind of compromise on certain things and mm-hmm. now they're at the point where that movie and the second one were financially successful enough to where they don't have to compromise as much with this this one. So uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind a fourth one or one just called Venom vs. Spider Man, you know, and that way it could be like a side thing, like Freddy vs. Jason. Um, that could be fun too. So we'll you know we'll see what the future holds. But speaking of, because you're a really good point, like you know, I I think like um, part of why Secret Invasion wasn't great was because there was only Rhodey, and you're like, well, right, you know, if secret if one person could turn into a scroll, so I think I, I never quite thought about that, but I I think for me like the Null thing would be just great to see Venom versus Null. You know, I saw, I, I did you play the Spider Man Two video game? I have, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, and just seeing the 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 I mean spoilers if you haven't played it, but when you see <laughs> Venom have the you know the Donny Cates wings, the wings, yeah, and then you also see the symbiotes with the circle like the yeah. null sort of thing, it's kind of like, hey, like we're gonna get it eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they hint at a lot in that game. Yeah. Um, they hint at a lot of well, it's funny that game hints at a lot of lore, but doesn't give you any, which is uh yeah. actually one of my negative criticisms of the game. It's like okay, they have the spirals, they have the wings, they have all these things that. And they actually gave Donny Cates no special thanks in the credit, which I thought yeah. was really interesting. And I'm like, man, like right, segment. I don't think they did segment. No, either. not segment either. And I'm like, why? But you guys kind of aped so much from their stuff, but you never like hinted at, you know, something bigger going on. They just kind of made Venom automatically a king in black in this, yeah. you know, because he's 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 creating all the symbiotes through the rock and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I love the game overall, and I love the part where you play as Venom and eat Craven's, yeah. you know, head off. And, and people, they trust me, people are watching this, they know because I've uploaded my entire playthrough on the channel. So, uh, so they probably, you know, the ones who are watching this probably have already seen it all that happen. Um, but you were saying, like, because uh, you were talking about outside of Venom and stuff that you, you're, mm-hmm. you know, kind of cutting back on comic book movies and, and to kind of set your expectations, get excited for things again. That's mm-hmm. a, a great approach. I feel like a lot of fans, they just kind of, you know, hit it into the final gear and just, you know, they're like, I'm going to thumb one Louise. I'll drive off this cliff. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and you're kind of like, no, 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 let's go back down to second gear or something and kind of cruise through and, and enjoy things. And as amazing, I, you know, I don't hear that enough from fans sometimes. So switching to other things that you like, cause you mentioned Deadpool three, which I'm so excited for. Um, and Joker two, uh, which I, I, I love lady Gaga. So I'm excited for her playing Harley yeah. Quinn. So, uh, so tell me a little bit about some other things outside of like the stuff we've talked about so far that, that does get you excited or, or like you said, that you want to maybe not see too much about because you want to be excited for. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm a big DC guy, you know, that's okay. why, I, you know, I have my, my ghost machine merch is because, you know, to see some of my favorite DC creators come together. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look, you know, obviously <laughs> behind me, I have a, a bunch of like DC stuff. Uh, that's stuff. what I'm really yeah. excited for. You know, I've uh, part of the, the the reason I've sort of tempered back on the movies is that I've been falling in love with the comics again. I've been, you know, reading a lot of like old stuff. And I think sometimes us as fans could get really frustrated naturally because we're like passionate about stuff. So like when the new stuff is not hitting, we're always like, oh, my God, this is the worst it's ever been and stuff like that. But you fail, sometimes fail to realize like, hey, the, the old great stuff is still there. You yeah. can still enjoy it. Um, and I think being a parent kind of gave me that perspective of like, wait, this, these things are kind of made for kids. So <laughs> maybe yeah. I should, you know, stop some time and let kids enjoy, enjoy them. You know, I'm sure when I was a kid and I loved the prequels, like adults hated them, you know? <laughs> sure. So like, as much as I dislike, you know, the last Jedi and, and all those movies, I, I kind of remember like, wait, like these, this is what the adults were kind of saying about the prequels when I love them. So um, but yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I have a lot of fandoms, like, um, I, I'm a big movie person, I, not mm-hmm. as much as I used to be just because, you know, having a kid kind of cuts into your movie time <laughs> and a lot of your fandom time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I like part of the reason we started the podcast was mainly because, um, it's a platform for me to talk about stuff. I love, you know, pop culture, video games, comics, movies, TV, um, all that stuff. So, um, uh, I've been really getting into manga lately, like, um, you know, cool. I'm. Uh, I really. Two of my favorite mangas right now are Kaiju Number Eight and uh, Sakamoto Days. Those are both two great, um, great manga. If you love comics, hey, the Shonen Jump app is only three dollars a month, and there's 
endless material there that you could get through and um it's a great platform i wish comics had something like that i think they'd be doing a lot better if there was more access to stuff like that because there would be so many kids that'd be able to discover like hey like maybe it's not all spider-man and batman maybe i could find sure. some booster gold stuff <laughs> uh oh yeah stuff. booster great character yeah. yeah um but even like in the comics i've been reading a lot of indie stuff which has been great because mm -hmm. um a great thing about the podcast uh if you guys ever listen to it we we mostly just have like comic creators come on to to talk about their their work their process and stuff like that and and part of it has been like really cool to like hear them speak about their process like uh not too long ago we had jeff johns on which for me cool. was like you know a lifelong <laughs> like kind of dream to be able to talk talk to him geek out a little bit you know make him feel old by telling him you know i was in high school when blackest night came out <laughs> uh all that kind of stuff so so for me like a lot of that stuff and you know that's why uh i think we connected you know like I, tom hardy's been in a lot of that stuff i remember vividly seeing the dark knight rises and inception and, and all that stuff so so for me yeah, i'm i'm into a lot of stuff mainly like a a, a dc kid um okay. but yeah i mean i could talk about almost anything pop culture so uh if if you ever want to hit the podcast we, we do a lot of stuff and uh but it's been good to again like i said have creators on because mm -hmm. i've been discovering a lot of like really great like indie books that are real good like palate cleansers you know what i mean like i said sometimes we get frustrated with like the direction of a particular story or something like that and sometimes like you know your favorite writer gets off a run and you're like oh my god this sucks <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it's good to kind of be like hey like why am i torturing myself reading or watching something i don't like when there's so much out there <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like why why hate watch or, or do those things because there's a lot of people doing a lot of great work so i just try to enjoy the good things i mean i have you know a, a youtube channel so naturally sometimes i complain about things you know we can't sure of course. right of course <laughs> <laughs> but uh it, it is good to to uh enjoy things and and share them and you know like again the podcast the people we have on like i only reach out to people of books i've read or i'm mm -hmm. excited about so I like if you ever listen to the podcast, we we don't have like a PR person or anything like that. Like we yeah. reach out to these people personally um, because we're, we're excited about what they're doing. So I think the the podcast has been like a real good like creative outlet and and a way for me to have the time I used to like to talk about things or, or watch things. That's cool. I, I'm glad you mentioned Jeff. Uh, I I have a story that goes back so many years <laughs> with uh with jeff um and i'll give a, a quick abridged version because mm -hmm. most of the people heard heard this before but um so in 2010 i had a brain aneurysm rupture and so when i woke up from that i had to go through physical therapy to walk and talk mm -hmm. um and it took you know a long time many like half a year for uh, most of it to get back on my feet and during that time brightest day was coming out and i was told because i didn't have memories from previous uh, of the aneurysm my, my memories yeah. start after that and so at the hospital or you know while i was going through recovery my mom was like hey you know you're a big green lantern fan that's like your favorite character uh mm -hmm. which is which is true and i found boxes and boxes of green lantern comics and i saw all this stuff from jeff uh like that he wrote so everyone's like this is the current stuff you should read it and my brother would uh go weekly to a comic store in that area and buy me the latest brightest day issues so i was yeah. reading brightest day about these people who got a second chance at life you know, um, and I felt that's what I was being given uh, post aneurysm. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I, I got to finally a year after that, go to Comic-Con in 2011 and tell Jeff, uh, right, this was when the movie came out too, the Green Lantern movie. Yeah. And I got to tell them at a panel, like, do that book, like change my life. Like it, it gave me yeah. the motivation to, to push myself to, you know, to be here. And they were so nice. And turns out the friend that I went to Comic-Con with that year now works for Jeff and with Jeff at ghost machine. So, uh, oh, yeah. so That's it awesome. was, it's really cool. And they knew each other before, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. um but, uh, but this was like, the, so it's just weird. Every time I think of him, I'm like, man, there's so many aspects of my life where that guy has been there pre and post aneurysm. And so I'm still a diehard fan of that guy's writing. I love his green lantern run. It was epic. I love Pete Tomasi. He introduced me to a lot of other writers like Pete and uh, Tony to Bedard and everyone. So, uh, so I'm excited for ghost machine. I, you know, I know they're doing the stuff that's out right now, like Geiger and stuff. So uh, yeah. Tell me a little bit about um, having Jeff on because I listened to that podcast 
And mm-hmm. I love I love the energy in there, and I could tell you're a fan of his. Like you're, yeah. you're like you're like me. If I was talking to him, I would just be like hanging on every word, big smile on my face. Yeah. And, you know. So tell me a little bit about that, because yeah, you don't do it with a PR. You just reached out to him, and he was kind enough to do that. So what was your walk like walk away experience after that? Were you just like, oh my god, that's like, yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it it was awesome. You know. Uh... Uh, me and Troy who, who do it, you know, yeah. it was kind of like we became friends talking about comics and, and usually like a Jeff Johns uh, book will, will come up. <laughs> uh, so it, it was it was really cool. Like, uh, I, I think it was one of those things like if you had told us like we'd be able to have like, you know, Jeff Johns on the podcast, we tell you like that was the last episode we ever recorded. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we paid someone a lot of money to, to make that happen. So yeah. it was great. And also, like, I think. One thing about the podcast in general, when we have guests on, especially when it comes to comics, there's just always like a, a really inspiring and aspirational like passion about the medium, you know, like in, in the case of Jeff, he could easily just be a producer on movies, <laughs> yeah. all right, TV shows and stuff like that. But, you know, he he, he loves making comics. If you look at the Ghost Machine and this, you know, company, he's writing like five out of the eight <laughs> books <laughs> you know what i mean granted he's collaborating with some amazing artists and you know some of those artists like you know uh jason fabach and, mm-hmm. and uh, gary frank you'll you know watch it uh you'll read a book with no letters <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> with, with uh so uh I, I like, do who think needs he, a writer <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it it is great to see that that level of like passion and it's inspiring like i said like as a as a creator on, on the other side of, of mm-hmm. making things and, and highlighting things, it's always like, oh, wow, like, hey, I have a lot of work to do, <laughs> you know, to like get to a level where that that passion shines through and you ha- really have to like make sure. Uh... And then also like being someone that like, you know, is is a great collaborator, something he brought up a lot during the the interview was just like, not once did he not bring up people he worked with, right. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Uh, and one, one thing that was cool was the, the ghost machine. Uh, I also recorded that we have a, a video on the uh, ghost machine panel mm-hmm. and also the siding that was at the booth. Um, you just see, like, I, I, I probably saw your friend <laughs> at that booth. You probably did. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and just seeing how excited they were. Um, there were a couple of people wearing ghost machine merch. I'm like, Hey, are you guys selling that? It was just on the website at the time. So I was like, all right. Um, and I immediately like, uh, you know, got some stuff. This is the, in the only thing I got, but again, it's cool to, 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 you know, talk to someone of, of that caliber and, and they'd be so gracious. Like we're super thankful. Uh, and you know, we hope to have them on again, but if we never have them on again, like that's all we ever needed to be able to, to talk to him and, uh, like I said, I, I still sometimes look at that episode. It's like, oh, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, wow, like that happened. And I'm sure that's happened with you, like when when you've met like Tom and stuff like that. You're like, oh, like. Yeah, hey, I'm like, show's over, back. everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, you know, this is kind of like where I thought the, the peak would be. You know, where do I go from here? Um, yeah. But you go from there, like like I said, that passion. Like, um, I think every time we interview a creator, um, that's the one consistent thing, whether it's someone like super independent or someone at the level of Jeff Johns, like, like I said, someone of his caliber, he's produced billion dollar movies. So yeah. the need to be in comics at all, or starting a, a brand new comics company where they share the equity of all the characters, right. Right. you know, it's not just like, Hey, like you create this, you own that. No, we all share in that success, which is uh, really inspiring as someone that um, again, like, bada boom like is something i share with my friend troy and you know it's something like we are really passionate about and so it's really cool to see like friends get together and and make something cool and you know like i said i'm I'm still like super grateful and uh that he was able to come on and like i said if i would have thought like you know 13 14 years ago when i was getting those black and blackest night comics and (laughs) wearing all my ring color rings yeah yeah, all the rings uh, that I would be have the opportunity to to talk to them and also meet them. You know, I I, I got to get a photo with them at New York Comic Con. Um, if if you would have told me that, I would have been like, you know, hell no. So uh, yeah. yeah, that was uh, super grateful, and it's our most listened to interview. So uh, I'm glad uh, people have have found the podcast through that, um, and we're grateful. 
That's cool, man. And yeah, I, I mean, I could tell. I say like your your passion like kind of oozes out of you in like a good way. And um, you and Troy both like I mean like and that interview was a lot of fun to listen to. So again, everyone watching, like, I'm going to put links down below to their podcast, their channel. Like, please go check out you know Chris's stuff and Troy's stuff. Like, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun, and it is. It's like I, like my show is very isolating. I the Venom vlog. I've done a hundred eight hundred and sixty episodes of that show, and most of them are just me talking and I get so tired of hearing me talk. So I was like, I got to do a podcast where I have people on and that's, yeah. you know, what led us here. And, uh, and it is though, it's just so infectious to like hear you talk about these things you love. And then when we have something in common, I'm like, ah, like that's so cool. Yeah. Like, you know, um, that passion is, I think something that a lot of fans forget about sometimes when they're on Twitter yelling and screaming or even, the negative fans who make content that are more drama based, who just want to focus on a certain thing. It's like, you could be having so much more fun right now. If you yeah. just like, yeah, you can be critical of stuff and that's fine, you know, and whatever. But you know, that, that community you're building, you, it's seeing like four people on screen, just moping about something and, yeah. and, and, and cutting something down. I'm like, this is not entertaining to me at all. Like uh, I'd rather you just criticize something real quickly. Yeah. And then get into what you love, you know? Um, and so, uh, you know, so that's something I want to talk about, though, is, uh, you know, speaking of other creators and stuff and what you do is every fan, when they go to a convention, you know, I'm hopeful I'll be going to MegaCon soon. And, and I think Ghost Machine is going to be there. So I'm hoping also, to find that's their first. Uh, they have an exclusive deal with uh, with Fan Expo. I think that's their first big con of the year. So yeah, we'll be able to, to meet Jeff and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm jealous because I'm sure there's going to be some exclusives and stuff like that. So. Um, well, let, fun. <laughs> let, let me know if there's something you want me to keep an eye out for you for. Okay. And, uh, and I'll, Listen, I'll keep it. Yeah, I will we'll do a trade. <laughs> uh, hi, hey, okay. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll let you know then we'll, we'll be in yeah. touch. Um, yeah. DM me and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Cause I'm the only thing I'm going for this year. I'm looking for a couple moon Knight things and I have some things I'm going to film for my new show. So, uh, so the ghost machine stuff will be a bonus. So I'm just going to go there for fun. So let me know. And I, I will, I'll keep yeah. an eye out. Um, so, uh, but, one thing about people like us and Troy and like, you know, uh, and my friend Gene, who we used to do nerd nation radio together. And that was the first time I got on a podcast. I was like, he added me onto his show. And then we did that for a couple years. Um, it's, there's a level of fandom that, you know, you got your, your casual fans, people who just kind of do this as a hobby and they check in on it every time, every once in a while. Then you got the people who are there every week at the comic store and, you know, looking for people to talk to and then there are people that go to conventions and they take it a little step further and they film and they take photographs like you do and stuff. But then you also are the type that creates content and makes videos and makes a podcast and makes shows discussing these passions. And that's yeah. very rare. Um, even though people say, oh, there's a lot of people that do that on YouTube, but not according to the population of the world. There's not. There's yeah. the, it's still very niche. So what was the moment where you were like, hey, I love this stuff so much. You know, I want to now make things like did you watch someone make stuff and you're like oh i would love to do something like this like how did you get into being on the other end of the camera and using that footage to make something you you know like as far as content and videos and shows go yeah i mean i i think for me it started actually like a long time ago um like i used to be a, a big reader of like ign and, and, cool. and watch a lot of their videos and then also i went to school for, for journalism and and part of like what was cool about that was being able to interview people. Like I, I still like pinch myself of the things I was able to do in school. You know, I got to interview like Tony Hawk and almost like flipped cool. out and was like, Hey, like me and my brother used to like play like Tony Hawk underground. And yeah. you know, I got to interview like Rami Malek, you know, like a bunch awesome. of like really cool, like, like people. And it's something I always wanted to go back into, but like one thing that was cool about that is uh, I had a, a really inspiring professor, uh, Patrick Hickey uh, Jr., who's actually been on the podcast. He, he has his own comic book company, is a voice actor, does everything. <laughs> Again, kind of makes me kind of feel like, hey, I'm doing nothing. Really. <laughs> um, Don't feel like that. Don't you know, like, like it's we, we do live in a time where it's uh, it's very easy to, to, to learn, to to reach out to people and and create community. And one thing I learned in school was like, hey, like. You know, if you're able to find the right contact information, most people are willing to talk about what they love. <laughs> so it's made the podcast like really cool because even I mean, now we have over 3000 subscribers and, and have like a, a, a decent social media following where people can look, look us up and, and feel mm -hmm. confident. And also we've had a lot of guests where they're like, oh, like if this person did it, you yeah. know, like I can do it and stuff like that. 
Um, so that's made it easier, but definitely like, you know, I, it, it's something that's like fulfilling, you know, it's almost like having like a, you know, an old car in the garage that I could work on and stuff like that. Like I, I have a day job that, yeah. you know, is, is, it was, is what pays the bill, bills and, and feeds my family and stuff like that. But I think we all need something like fulfilling, you know, I think that could be very, um, if it's where all your energy is, sometimes you feel you don't have anything for yourself, right. <laughs> like sure. an identity. And I think as, as a parent too, like I think about all this stuff, like, Hey, like what's like, you know, when, you know, not to get morbid, but like when, when I'm not around, like, sure. what do I have left that like my son, like <laughs> can think about or go back to, you know, sure. like now, like with the podcast, like if in the future, I'm not, you know, <laughs> not around way, 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 way in the future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You could always like listen to those like podcast episodes and yeah. be like, Hey, like that's my dad. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's a, uh, it's uh, a lot of that. And I think, you know, being a parent has given me more than discipline. I, I always felt like I'd start something and never be consistent on it. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's really great about having Troy as a partner too. Cause uh, I think there's a level of like accountability, like, Hey, like if it was just me, maybe I'd stop. <laughs> like maybe I wouldn't be two years into these to, to, to bada boom, but right. because of Troy and because of, you know, like my commitment to, to him and, and sort of the thing and sort of how, and that's why I think, again, this community is great. If you look at it the right way, there's so many people doing great things that you could look at it and be like, Oh, like, why do they have this many subscribers and why do I don't and stuff like that? Instead, sure. you should probably be more like, Hey, like if they can do it, I can yeah. probably do it. Hey, maybe I should reach out and be like, Hey, like, how did you do this? <laughs> how did you like get around these things? Like, so I think when you kind of create that, that level of community, it's always good. And I've gotten older. Like I used to be like, 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 to be honest, like I used to be like, you know, angry all the time and, sure. and all those things but then you get you know now i'm 30 now i have a kid there's less time for that right. occasionally that version of me comes out when you know something that i i'm really excited for it doesn't come out good like yeah you know, crisis on infinite earth part one but <laughs> <laughs> beside that you know like i'm i try to only make time for for things i'm really passionate about and i uh yesterday we had uh two interviews with um hmm. you know two different creators and and after it, I was like, man, like if I could just do this every day instead of like working, you know, <laughs> like, like not even the money part, like, hey, like if there was like, if the government one day was like, hey, like, no, like you could just stay home and just do this. Like, <laughs> hey, I'd be able to talk about all this all, all day without like money or anything because the fulfillment's there. So, um, so that's a long way to kind of get back to like, <laughs> I missed that feeling I used to get of being able to interview people, mm -hmm. being able to participate in these things. And the podcast is a, a platform for that as a creator. And I think if you are thinking about getting into content creation, that is the first thing you should think of. Like, hey, like, what am I passionate about? Because there are going to be days where uh, technically, like, this is not like, there's only a very small percentage of people that I, are able to make any type of income off of this. Sure. So what's really going to keep you going on it is the passion. So what are you passionate about? What do you like talking about? Start there and then... And also, like, you don't necessarily need a setup. Like, right now, like, I've pieced together, like, hey, one day I got my mic and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You could use your AirPods. You could use your phone. Yeah. You could yeah. use, like, the, the, the tools available for you. There are, you know, YouTubers and creators who are online. You do not know what their face looks like. <laughs> and yeah. now with, like, VTubers and stuff like that, you don't even have to put, like, your voice in things and stuff like that. So I think uh, that's where it starts a passion. And for me, I was really passionate about comic books, movies, games. And what I learned from journalism is that you – there is a way to do all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So <laughs> and the way to do that is actually in content creation and, and being able to talk about it, have fun. So – you know, hopefully one day we're you know able to to make this a, a thing that we can do full time and stuff but for now like i'm just really grateful of, of people um giving us the time even doing something like this like like i said yeah. it's really cool like to meet someone on the internet they're cool like they're able to share passions and stuff like that and we never have to know each other about each other's drama <laughs> yeah. any of that and you know as as much as like i I wish the best for everyone, but the good thing is like there's no strings attached to a lot of the, the interactions you have online and stuff like that. So it's like, hey, like we may never talk again after this, but that's okay. We had a good time <laughs> yeah. talking about like, you know, art bound and stuff like that. And I think that's the best part of the internet. Sometimes like I feel like we're like 
bombarded with like the bad parts, which is sure. like, you know, but I think this is, um, if I have any ask, if you ever get into content creation, whoever's listening to this, just like try to have fun and, and be positive, meet people, make friends, like do all that stuff. Because if you do the other stuff, you're just going to be stressed out thinking about what other people are doing that are like halfway across the world <laughs> who have different problems and don't compare yourself to them and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I've always been passionate about it and uh, it's cool to be in a, a position where like hey like um one one guest we had on the podcast was lynn Che, who cool. is uh from the insidious movies mm -hmm. and you know in one of my all-time favorite movies dumb and dumber but yeah. i would not have been able to to do that if i didn't uh it sucked it we had to do it during the strike so i couldn't ask her about those things sure of course but, <laughs> yeah but again like uh she she's an actor and what was really great was she was doing a one woman show and you find that like hey like what keeps her going at right. this age is the passion. Like she wrote a one woman play and her brother is the, the founder of new line cinema. I did not know that, <laughs> Whoa. which is insane. So yeah. I, I don't think she really has to work again any day in her life, <laughs> but, but what keeps her going is like the that passion, passion for, yeah. for creating and stuff like that. And all that stuff is inspiring. So I always have to check myself. Not I'm like on a soapbox right now, but I think the, the reason I am trying to verbalize this is like, it's something I have to remind myself of too. Like, Hey, like just try to be passionate, try to be positive, try to enjoy these things because in the end, uh, like it's you don't want to be remembered for just being miserable all the time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think um, like I, I look at everything like a job because that's I don't know how else to look at the world, unfortunately. Uh, so when I think of YouTube, like I'm like, oh, this is my second job. It may not be a job that yeah. pays me, you know, um, but uh, or where I mean, I do. I'll get a check every now and again, but it, it's rare. Yeah. But but I'm not doing it for that. Like you said, if you're out there and you want to content create, my advice is, you know, have a job, have a, some stability in your life, and then do this on the side and, you know, start one day a week. And then if, if you feel like you have more time, do it two days a week and, you know, and then you'll, you'll find your rhythm. Um, but like you said, as long as you find things you're passionate about and talk about, I think you'll last longer at it. Um, and if you feel like you want to give up, you know, at times finding a Troy or in the case, you know, Troy finding yeah. you is a nice thing. Me, when I found Gene, it was like, it's like, good. I had someone to help me be accountable for when I'm not delivering, uh, on, on a, on a weekly basis. And, uh, and now I'm to the point now where it's just like, I, I mean, I have, like you said, we don't know each other's dramas, but with my condition, it's like, it's, mm. I can't be consistent anymore. It's so hard. Yeah. Um, and I'm, and I'm trying really hard to do it, but the more stress I put on us, the worse we all get. Um, yeah. you know, so, so it's like, I have to, it's like choosing your battles kind of thing. But I look at this as just like a, it's fun. So don't let it stress you out. This is not your main job. And I have no intention to make it my main job ever. So for once I settled into that, I'm like, okay, so people are very kind. They're very patient with me. And some days they get five videos in a week. And then sometimes I get a week with one video, you know, yeah. it's just, I'm doing my best. So, but, uh, but I'm, I'm like you, it's like, you know, you, you, these people who make things make them that make, you know, my reaction to them is so, intense like uh like jeff yeah. like i said i could break down our diagnosis and it would really shine a light on jeff's work in green lantern in particular yeah. and and but to me it's like it's that's less important as just the impact his work has had on me you know and so and i love his work so much that i want to go and talk about it and that's what led me here too with with you so we i started doing stuff when new 52 came out and then i've i've been talking about comics ever since <laughs> so um so the last thing I, I want to get into is, um, you know, content goals, like, you know, like, cause we're wrapping up here now and I just, I sometimes set goals for myself at the start of the new year. Sometimes I do it in the middle of the year, but do you ever find yourself going like, all right, here's some dream guests I'd like to try to get by the end of this year or in the next six months. Do you ever set goals like that for yourself, you and Troy? And, um, and if so, like, what are some that you're willing to share of something you'd like to do in 2024 on your channel? Yeah. I mean, uh, less so before and more now, I think, you know, before New York comic con, we hadn't had a video that hit a thousand views. Okay. Like we had shorts and stuff like that. And shorts, like if you're getting into content creation, if you want to grow your channel, just do shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we had all that, like we had hit 2000 subscribers before we had a thousand view, like actual video. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. And I think sort of like after the the Jeff interview, it definitely put us like in a different like 
like mindset of like, okay, like we, we have to be more consistent because now we have people looking at our stuff that weren't before, you know what I mean? And there's a level of expectation that comes with that. Now that could be a good thing. That could be a stressful thing. I've looked at it as a good thing. It's like, all right, like now that we have these extra eyeballs, because before, like, it was very easy, like, even with having Troy to kind of be like, okay, like, I can take a little break. <laughs> right. Hey, if there isn't a video or a podcast this week, that that isn't, like, so, uh, but ever since that, like, uh, we've had, like, some really cool guests on. We've, we've done some things, like, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had Patrick Heinlein and Marco Ferrari on, mm-hmm. and it was cool to have, like, an artist uh, writer duo on at the same time and talk about their process and stuff. So definitely this year we want to do that more. We uh, we did that today, which uh, yesterday, sorry, um, which is cool. And in terms of goals, like you know, uh, I would love to get Todd McFarland on. That's like a like you know number one goal. Uh, Scott Snyder is another one. Yeah. Um, yeah, like in terms of comic people, that and then also like in terms of the channel, like. Um, like we we want to get monetized we're, we're really close so that's something like um we want to to get to for ourselves and, and okay. stuff like that that'd be a really good accomplishment new york comic con like you know got us halfway there <laughs> just off those videos yeah uh we did a, a artist alley video that's like almost at like ten thousand views so, so fun i love artist alley yeah. yeah yeah so that that was really cool so I think that's kind of like where the, where the goals are and, and keep getting better. Like, you know, um, mm-hmm. doing the podcast, like what thing, one thing I'll also like say about like constant creation, like also look at it, like, like you said, like a job, like almost yeah. like look at it. It's like, Hey, like I'm acquiring skills that I can yeah. actually put on a resume. Hey, this is social media. Mm-hmm. I've also done graphic design because I'm doing the thumbnails. Yeah, I can edit now. Yeah, exactly. I'm also yeah. editing and yeah. stuff like that. Those are all like actual, like tangible skills that you are marketable. So, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you do fall off content creation, hey, like maybe you could get a job somewhere like editing like their real estate videos or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think just getting better at that stuff too. Like, uh, and I think another thing is like I've gotten really good at like the social media part. Okay. But like a goal of mine is like using that more to tie back to the actual podcast episodes. Like, um, so doing more like clips from our interviews and stuff, we, we've done some that do really well, but to be honest, sometimes I'm not as consistent. So I think like, you know, I definitely have to like update my process of being like when I'm doing interviews, like actually writing down like time marks. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was a really good answer. Like when I have to, like, when I get the video later, maybe let me clip out that part. So that I could put it like in a video or, or, or like a reel or TikTok and stuff like that. So um, that's another goal. I think like now, like uh, I've gotten really good at the the social media part. Like the TikTok has over two thousand followers. This is the the YouTube over three thousand, and the Instagram is over a thousand. So we're on like solid ground, you know, in terms of that stuff. But I definitely want more people uh, to listen to it, and then hopefully too, like me and Troy have been talking about, like reaching out to like. Um, like sponsors, you know, mm-hmm. I, I have so many goals this year. So this is probably like, me Good. Right. like I, I also want to do like a, uh, see if we could get like an exclusive comic book, like a, a comic book cover we could sell to like fans and stuff like that. Like mm. I would love to get like an exclusive we could do for that. Uh, yeah. There's just so many ideas, you know, I think like now sort of being meeting so many people, you're like, yeah, what's stopping you from doing all these things? It's only you stopping you, you know. Going back to sort of like the Jeff, as I was, um, uh, like when they did the the Ghost Machine panel, mm-hmm. you know, obviously there's so many great artists there, and one of the things they had brought up was the fact that like, hey, like no one could tell you not to write a script, no one could tell you not to draw something. Yeah, <laughs> like what's really stopping us from from doing something like a Ghost Machine? What's stopping yeah. me and Troy from, you know? achieving some of the goals we have. So it's like, yeah, just getting, you know, buckling down. But like the main thing, like in terms of guests, Todd, Scott, those are like the two, like okay. top, top, top of the list. <laughs> uh, and then uh, like goals, you know, getting more people to listen to the podcast episodes. We've had a lot of uh, like non podcasts like episodes do really well, mm-hmm. you know, 
again, everyone likes drama. So when we're talking about the Suicide Squad game, everyone, you know, watch that. Movie. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those kind of things. But, you know, uh, again, we, we try not to, like, feed into that and get back to, like, what we were passionate about, which is sharing our, our, our love of comics. So I want more people to listen to those things. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Awesome, man. Well, I mean, I'm definitely going to be watching more episodes. It was funny. I was telling you before to be transparent. Like I, there's yeah. usually I have more time to watch more stuff. So I've watched some of your stuff, but not as much that I wanted to watch. But I think that just speaks to your your stuff you guys make is that it's really good and it's really engaging. Um, so uh, yes, please, everyone out there, go subscribe. Again, links down below. I'm putting all the links. So go subscribe, follow them. Um, and any other links you want me to share, you know, feel free to plug some right now. If you, if can people find you on Twitter, on social media and stuff as well? Yeah. yeah. I know Instagram I know, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, at Instagram, we're probably most active on is, um, you know, at uh, Bada Boom Podcast. Okay. Um, on Twitter, I think we're, or Twitter X, we're Bada Boom Pod. Uh, okay. uh, we're getting real active on threads. I think uh, if you're a creator, like threads is a, a really great place to uh, build community. It feels like what Twitter used to be, where it's more positive and, okay. <laughs> and about yeah. making connections and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, and also TikTok, uh, where I think uh, Bada Boom Pod or Bada Boom Podcast, if you search us up, we're, we're probably the, the only thing called Bada Boom Podcast, which is great for <laughs> SEO. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, uh, yeah we, we, we like to have fun, especially like on, on TikTok and stuff. So we post a lot of memes and you can find some of our, our, our clips. And and also if you, the Instagram is a really great place to visit because that's a really great hub. We have our, our link tree there. So that will take you to the YouTube. That will take you to uh, anything we got going on and hopefully some bigger things to come this year. Heck yeah, man. Well, Chris, dude, I, I mean, I could talk to you for weeks. I know I could, um, <laughs> but, but you have a family to get back to and, uh, and I have to wrap this up at some point. So I just yeah. want to say thank you for your time. Um, I definitely, you know, you said earlier, like this may be the last time we talk. I really hope not. Uh, I oh, hope yeah. I get to talk to you again and, and, and maybe Troy at one point, like you guys are amazing. I love what you're doing. So please keep doing it. And I hope you do hit as many of those goals that you set for yourself as possible. Um, and if you ever want uh, info or feedback about covers let me know because i know some people who go through that stuff to make their own covers and i can give you some info about that as well that'd be awesome but, yeah so uh, yeah reach out to me um and uh, everyone else like i said please go links are down below check them out check out the show and subscribe so thank you again for watching like share, subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the future peace peace bada boom <laughs> <laughs>